of the guns is made. Uh -huh. You really have to wonder about someone who chooses to surround themselves with dead things. Satchels, boxes, and other assorted boring things for hunting. Oh, shrink. Let's see if Jean has anything interesting in here. Not very much, except a letter. Oh. Lieber Jean, vielen Dank für deine Hilfe. Es ist nicht zu fassen, dass Mutter wirklich wollte, dass ich von der Uni geschmissen werde. Einfach unglaublich, sorge dich nicht. Ich werde dir hier nicht sagen, dass du die Direktion der Uni umgestimmt hast. Ein Anlauf, ein Leben zu ruinieren, reicht schon, Juliette. Ah, der ist ja nett. Also der hat der Juliette geholfen, damit sie auf der Uni bleiben kann. Obwohl die Mutter gesagt hat, sie soll nicht. Guter, guter Papa. Oh. Who the hell are you? What are you doing in my cabin? Jean Dupre, I presume? Yes, that's right. Who are you? Miles Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the attempted murder of your wife. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Forgive my rudeness, but you startled me. Perfectly understandable, Mr. Dupre. This is a man whose bark is most definitely worse than his bite. Entschuldigung. Entschuldigung. I had a nasty run-in with an alligator when I was a child. One less in the world doesn't really bother me to be honest. Muss mich noch umschauen. An absolute bore. Are these even native to New Britannia? Seems Mr. Dupre is a Bollingworth man. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Some high society type in the middle of a hunt. I don't understand why anyone would get a thrill out of murdering innocent creatures. Pino Kamin. Not a very dignified end for our friend Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear. So. Can we talk, Mr. Dupre? I suppose so. I yes. suppose so. The le moustache. So, um. I suppose it goes without saying that you enjoy hunting, Mr. Dupre? Yes, I do. I consider myself something of an outdoorsman, you see. It's nice to be able to go out and get some fresh air after being sat at the bank all day. What about your home life? Truth be told, I'm not at home as often as I'd like to be. I've been trying to make more time, but something usually comes up. Business is business, after all. It's gelogen. Yeah, but what business are we talking about here exactly? Um, Stiefkinder. What can you tell me about your stepchildren? Ah, Andrew and Juliet? I see a bright future ahead for both of them. What's your relationship with them like? It's fine. Why do you ask? I got the distinct impression from both of them that they hardly ever see you. Well, yes, I suppose that is true. We don't spend much time together, but they're both so busy with school. I don't want to get in their way. Not to mention my job keeps me away from home for considerable periods of time. Excuses, excuses. I get the feeling Mr. Dupre is his family on purpose. But why? What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? Oh, my dear wife, the past few days have been just awful for all of us. Yes, I can imagine. How long have you been married? For seven wonderful years. Laura and I are just as much in love now as we were on the day we married. Well, does he actually expect anyone to believe that nonsense? Mm -hmm. You'll pardon me for being so frank, Mr. Dupre, but why are you out hunting and not at your wife's side? Excuse me? Who are you to lecture me on my marriage? A fellow married man, that's who. Your wife has just suffered a very traumatic ordeal. Shouldn't you be at home caring for her? But we saw the confusion at the house with the police investigating and her being attended to by her doctor. I just needed to get away for a bit. Surely you can understand, Mr. Fordham. There's something off about this guy, Miles. He's definitely hiding something. And for once, I don't think it's from his wife. Guy Dumas. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. They were former servants of yours. Do you not remember them? Oh, I remember them. I just have nothing to say about them. I've met some bad liars in my day, but this guy really takes the cake. We'll get him somehow. Do you know anything about the circumstances surrounding Madame Dupre's death? Horrible, simply horrible. 
Do you have any idea why Mr. Martin might have attempted to kill her? Mr. Martin? <gasps> you mean the boy they arrested? Andrew said it's because Martin and his mother are witches who prey on the well-to-do. You only need to take one look at him to see his trouble. It's a shame they put him away so quickly. I'd have liked to teach him a lesson or two, believe you me. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. A lesson on how to cower in the corner, most likely. So, Juliet's brief. Do you know anything about Madame Dupre trying to get Juliet taken out of her classes at the university? Ah, yes. Laura didn't approve of her daughter's desire to further her education. So, she sent a letter to the university requesting Juliet's withdrawal. I didn't approve of her trying to meddle in Juliet's affairs. If she wants to study, she should be free to do so. I wrote them a letter myself, without Laura's knowledge, telling them to disregard the previous request for withdrawal. That's very good of you. Yes, well, I dislike seeing people being told what they can and can't do by others. Yet, he seems perfectly willing to employ servants at his home. Well, I suppose we're all hypocrites in one way or another. So, jetzt hat die Frage der Fragen. Do you fear your wife, Mr. Dupre? Do I? What? The question's quite simple. Are you afraid of Madame Dupre? Why in the easy would you think that? Amelie hat mir gesagt, sie wären. Ich habe diese blutverschmierte Peitsche gefunden. Sie haben mit Sicherheit Angst vor ihrem eigenen Schatten. Ich mache das mit der Peitsche. I'd be afraid of someone who kept a bloody whip in my bedroom. Care to explain that? I... I... I you don't know her like I do. No one does. Well... No one aside from the servants, I suppose. She's cruel, Mr. Fogger. Crueler than anyone or anything I've ever seen. So. Tell me more about Madame Dupre's cruelty. She treats the servants like animals, Mr. Fogger. She would say the most vile, awful things to them. Things I would expect to hear on the Gascon docks. Not from the lips of a grand dame. And the beatings. Oh. God, the screams I would hear from somewhere in the house. I never dared find out where. Nobody else ever heard the screaming? No. She was cunning. She would do it when no one else was around. Once she knew I had heard, she threatened me. Told me she would... Yes? She threatened to expose my secret, Mr. Fordham. Ooh. And what secret is that? Our marriage is one of convenience. It's all for show. Laura has herself a well-to-do husband, and I am a normal man in the eyes of society. I see. Hmm? I suppose that would explain a few things. Well, now, how was that not obvious to you? The soporific is really having this a bad effect on first you. Hmm. Don't worry, Mr. Dupre. Your secret's safe with me. Th thank you, Mr. Fodon. Hey? Tell me what you know about Guy Dumas and Celine. <sighs> Celine had uh, an accident. Accident? What kind of accident? Laura thought Celine had been stealing her silverware. She got a bit carried away with a beating and. Dupre killed Celine? Yes. Sorry, she doch. did. In order to keep it quiet, she had Sorry, Celine doch. placed in our family tomb. I see. What about Guy? I don't know. I never saw him again after that. Well, this case has certainly taken a turn for the sinister. I'll be going now. Au revoir, Mr. Vaudam. Oh, das war aber sehr vorhersehbar. Das hab ich gewusst. So, jetzt hat man. Ähm. Bruno erfüllt sich vor und schweigt, damit sie. Dass sie also, er fürchtet sich vor ihr zu tun und schweigt, damit sie nicht verrät, dass ihre Ehe nur aus praktischen Gründen besteht. Was waren die praktischen Gründe? Ich wieder nicht mehr. Grab mal der Chest ist uns nochmal untersuchen. Okay, das machen wir mal. Flip. So. I have to admit, the fear. Ja, that nice. nest is full of eggs. Perhaps she abandoned. Always. This must be what was going to be Madame de... I don't see anything... What? Were you ex... No, but I was hoping... These crypts are reserved for future... There are only three... Then let's hope the Chesterton... These crypts are... There are only... Then let's hope... Uh, so. Douglas Chester... 
Ja, und wo... Hä, was soll ich jetzt da nochmal untersuchen? Jane Scott, Desmond, John Pat, William Arthur, Ch Celine. Wait a minute, this is Celine. Ah, Amazing. Celine, stimmt. Celine, 1823 bis 44. <coughs> Taken too soon. Rest ye with the angels. Oh, schau mal. Somehow a piece of paper got wedged into the side of the vault. Am Papier ziehen mit Pinzette am Papier ziehen. Mit Pinzette. Carefully now. Achso, muss ich machen. Oh. Oh. Got it. Nice work, Fordham. Gotta see what this is. Sie wird dafür zahlen, was sie dir angetan hat, mein Schatz. Ja, das ist von dem Gärtner. Interesting. Leaving notes for the dead. How very touching. Wonder if anyone has left me one at my grave. Quiet, Bill. I need to think. Aber das war auch klar. Ja, das ist von Guy. Now we just need to figure out where to find him. Is there anything on the other side of that piece of paper? Bill, you're a genius. I wouldn't give me all the credit just yet. Let's see. A receipt for an extended stay at the Stun Arms. Does that sound familiar at all? Hmm, vaguely. But I can't recall anything off the top of my head. Looks like we'll have to do a bit more searching. Stun Arms. Okay. Ähm. Um, Raus und was und wo das Stone Arms ist. Gut, um Lies Aussage. Das ist der Fälle aus mit einem Debris Grausamkeit. Er wird Martin. Geist Notiz. Puh, könnte man das jetzt herausfinden? Irgendjemand fragen bestimmt. Oder, hätte ich gesagt. Wir gehen jetzt einfach mal so durch und fragen irgendjemand, wird schon wissen, gell? Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. <coughs> Sorry. Brief von Madame Dupree. Did your mother try to get you withdrawn from the university? As a matter of fact, she did. Just another one of the many ways she tried interfering with my life. What happened, exactly? Mother wrote the university requesting that I be withdrawn. I found out about it when the enrollment office contacted me. I couldn't believe it at first. I thought it was some sort of mistake, but then they showed me the letter. I take it you were upset. More than upset, Mr. Fordham. I was furious. I was trying to make a real life for myself. One that wasn't about dresses or debutante balls or fending off suitors. I'd been given the chance to make something of myself. And Mother was ready to bring it all crashing down. Just because she didn't agree with it. But in the end, you're still here. Yes. Jean stepped in and fixed everything. He didn't have to do it, but it was very good of him. I'm afraid that was the beginning of the end of my relationship with Mother. We never really managed to fix things after that. I found this note from Guy at your mother's family tomb. At the tomb? Why would he leave a note there? It's for Celine. She's been interred there. She's dead? <laughs> oh God, that's terrible. What happened to her? And why would she be in our family tomb? That isn't for me to say. You'll have to ask your stepfather. In any case, this note was written on a hotel receipt. I'm trying to find where it came from, but the name is only partially legible. I, I can't say it rings any bells. I'm sorry, Mr. Fordham. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. Natürlich wirst du jetzt arbeiten, wenn... Fordham, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hmm. Wait, what am I saying? Of course you are. Madame Dupre has been interfering with Juliet's studies and disapproved of her relationship with Martin. Hence, they're falling out. Plus, the information in Juliet's notes about ethericity, putting animals into a death-like trance, seems awfully suspicious. It's enough to establish <coughs> both means and motive That's plenty to consider her a suspect. Ja, das schon, aber puh. Ich glaube irgendwie nicht. Madame Dupree's entfremdete Tochter hasst ihre Mutter, weil diese ihre Beziehung missbilligt und versucht hat, sie von der Universität werfen zu lassen. Er forscht die Eigenschaften der Ätherizität, insbesondere dahingehend, ob lebende Kreaturen damit tot erscheinen können. Ja, aber das wussten wir ja vorher schon alles. Da, da stand in den Aufgaben, ja, 
Verhältnis rausfinden. Das wussten wir doch schon alles. Das wäre wir total doof, ne? So, gehen wir mal, ähm, wo gehen wir denn als nächstes hin? Hier mal hin. Können wir hier nochmal mit der sprechen? So Neuigkeiten gibt. Gibt, gibt. Mhm. Nochmal Fall durchgehen. Okay, what have you got? I found this note in Chesterton too. I think it was left by the person who attacked Madame de Cray. Nice work. Sounds like you're about ready to wrap things up. Oh yeah. I will be as soon as I find him. Take a look at the other side of it. Part of a receipt for a hotel? Yes. The name is only partially visible at the bottom. Stun Arms. Hmm. The only hotel that comes to mind is the Boston Arms in Chumley. Of okay. course. I knew the name sounded familiar. Ah, the stories I could tell you about that place. Not right now. You're helpful as always, Upton. Thank you. Good luck, Fordham. I hope you find your suspect. Yes. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. So. Sehr gut. Jetzt können wir nämlich hier zum Hotel Bolson Arms. Richtig. Who is it? Ah, das ist der Guy. Freundlich sein mit Nachdruck und Führung vorsichtig. Freundlich sein. I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. It's extremely important I speak with you, Mr. Dumas. Private investigator. What do you want? Just to talk. May I come in? Yes, I suppose so. I found your note in St. Dennis Cemetery. Care to explain what it means? How, how did you... I'm a private investigator, Mr. Dumas. That's what I do. Now we can either do this the easy way or the hard way. It's up to you. I left that note for Celine. I didn't think anyone would ever find it. So it was you who attacked Madame Dupre? Yes. Yes, it was me. I confess. <laughs> I can't remember the last time a suspect actually confessed. If only they were all like this. But please, Mr. Fordham, you have to understand. The woman is evil. If only you knew what she did. Please, don't arrest me, Mr. Fordham. You have to know the truth about Madame Dupre. Relax, Mr. Dumas. I'm not going to arrest you just yet. I'm perfectly willing to hear your side of the story. Now let's take this nice and slow. How did you come to be employed by Madame Dupre? I used to work in an iron factory in Chomley, but a few years ago, they brought in some steam machines to help production. One of the machines had a problem, and my friend Connor and I were assigned to fix it. We had no idea what we were doing, but we wanted to keep our jobs. I don't know what happened, but the next thing I knew, Connor was dead. But I was badly hurt. I swore never to go near one of those machines again. After I got better, I spent a few months looking for work, but it was impossible to find any jobs that didn't involve steam tech. Then I found out about Madame Dupre. Working at her home seemed like an improvement. I had a decent bed to sleep in. The work was not difficult, and I even made friends with her daughter. But Madame Dupre soon showed her true nature. Celine. Tell me about Celine. Oh, my dear Celine. She was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. We were going to get married, you know. Then that devil killed her. She, she beat her to death in front of me. I was powerless to do anything. Please, Mr. Fordham, I don't want to remember. Let us speak of something else. Do you know Albert Martin? No. Who is that? He's hmm. Juliet's lover, falsely accused of the crime you committed. I, I had no idea. Are you going to let an innocent man die because of what you did? No. No, of course not. I, I suppose things got out of hand. It was not my intention for someone else to take the blame for my actions. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? She seemed like a nice woman at first, but after working for her, I came to know how awful she truly was. When no one was around, she would beat me and some of the other servants for fun, say the most cruel things, call us horrible names. Why didn't you just leave? She threatened us, told us she would make it impossible for us to get work anywhere else. It's already difficult enough getting a job that doesn't force you to operate those awful machines to be blacklisted by Madame Dupre would have been the final nail in the coffin. So why did you attack Madame Dupre in the way you did? I knew that if I went to her home and killed her, I would be caught and thrown in jail. I needed to find a way to do it quietly and not make anyone suspicious. 
Also, I wanted her to suffer for what she did to my Celine. I had read about toxic plants mm -hmm. in Juliet's school books, and I knew a bit about them from working as a gardener. So I decided to poison the prey and make her appear dead so she could be buried alive and suffer the same way she made us when she would lock us away in her Don't secret room. Out. Came out home? Did you say secret room? Yes, Mr. Fordham. It was no bigger than a coffin. She would place us inside if she was especially mad at us, with no food Wood. or water, sometimes for days at a time. We couldn't scream because she would stuff our mouths. She would also plug our ears and cover our faces. How often did she put you in there? Only a few times, but that was more than enough. I'd rather not think about it. So you have no idea where it is? None. I only remember Madame Dupre would say the same thing any time she was about to put someone in there. A perfect servant must behave. I've told you everything, Mr. Fordham. Are you still going to arrest me? I haven't quite decided yet. Nee, das wollte ich vorher eigentlich auch nicht. If I can find this secret room, it would be enough to charge Madame Dupre with a crime. However, if you haven't been telling me the truth, I have been, Mr. Fordham. I swear it. I'll even make you a deal. If you promise me you'll try to find the secret room, I won't leave this hotel. All right, Duma. It's a deal. Well, at least now we can go straight to Upton and have him taken in. Unless you really do believe him about the secret room. Äh, uh, was? Oh, ich glaube, von draußen kommt jetzt ein kühler Wind. That's all for right now, but I'll be back. Yes, Mr. Fordham. I'll be here. Ich glaube, schaut alle auf die Uhr und aufs Datum. Ich glaube, jetzt geht der Herbst los. Genau jetzt. Ähm, Guy Dumas, ehemaliger Bediensteter von Madame Dupré, hat gestanden, sie aus Rache wegen des Mordes an seiner geliebten Zivilen angegriffen zu haben. Mm, return to Abend, accuse Albert, accuse Juliet. Zu Abden und Guy Dumas beschuldigt, Madame Duprés geheimen Raum finden. Mm, ja. Das würde ich gerne. One thing I can't stand, it's crooked paintings. Ist hier noch irgendwas? Kistel. A wash basin? When did this place get so fancy? It appears someone is due for seven years of bad luck. Seems to be what passes for a dresser around here. Either that or Dumas is secretly a pirate. Das kann ja sein. A pirate. Piratinski. Piratinski. Ähm. Genau zu der Food. Boah, die ist. Boah. So, können wir nochmal mit dir sprechen? Kann ich dir mal sagen, was deine Mutter für eine ist? ist? Schade. Ähm, ich wollte hier hin. Die mal fragen, vielleicht weiß die, wo das ist. Amelie? Yes? What is it? We mustn't be seen talking. I found this upstairs in Madame Dupre's bedroom. Do you recognize it? Oh, please take that away, Mr. Fordham. Why would you show it to me? I'm sorry, I didn't think it would upset you. Ah, uh, Miles. <laughs> Maybe someday you'll learn how to read basic human emotion. Thank you, Amelie. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Now please, let me get back to work. Äh, jetzt müssen wir mal gucken. Nicht, dass es hier doch noch irgendwo... Geheimer Raum. Mit dem konnten wir nicht mehr reden. Ja. Nee. Könnt ihr noch mal reden? Der hat bis jetzt auch noch nichts Sinnvolles gesagt. Oh, a perfect servant must behave. A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. Me so far, eh? In the middle, see? Was? Mir so far, eh? Huh? A perfect servant must behave. Moment. And now you'll taste an early grave. <lacht> Mir so far, eh? <lacht> In the middle, see? Mir so far, eh? So long, Bertie. Okay. <lacht> bye bye! As amusing as. Was? Mir so far, eh? Mir Sofa in der Mitte. What? Hm. Diese 
ganz habe ich es noch nicht überrissen. Was der Vogel jetzt meinte. Ah, hier ist Sofa. Nothing. Damn that bird. What the hell was he babbling about? Nothing. Damn that bird. What the hell? Mm. Nothing. Damn that. A much younger Madame Du. Bücherschrank. There are way more important things to concern ourselves. Okay. Buch. Nee, das wollten wir nicht mehr. Oh, dear God. Da war nichts mehr drin. Porträt. Aber hier ist sonst nichts. Nothing. Damn that bird. What the hell was he babbling about? In Sofa. Mir Sofa. Ray. In der Mitte. Hm. Oh, jetzt kommt wirklich der Herbst. Vielleicht. Nee. Kiste ist zu. Schubladen haben wir schon durchgeschaut. Da ist nichts. Gut, das ist ja auch das Zimmer von der Schürte. Oh, vielleicht bringt es jetzt was, wenn ich die Tonleiter spiele. Vielleicht geht dann das Sofa zur Seite. Jetzt pass mal auf. Bei uns. Nichts passiert, ne? Ah, hier ist ja noch ein Sofa. There's nothing here. That beast better not have misled us, or he'll be roasting on a spit for sure. There's nothing here. That beast better. There's nothing here. That beast better not have misled. Hast du schon wieder Angst, Bubi? Dazu noch mal gucken, ob da was aufgegangen ist. Aber wahrscheinlich nicht, ne? Nothing. Damn that bird. Oh, ich muss doch mal mit dem Vogel reden, der hat gelogen. Oder wir haben es nicht kapiert. A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. Me so far, Ray. In the middle, see? Me so far. Pieces of eight. Who's a pretty? So long. As amusing. Müssen noch Leute befragen. This quack hasn't gotten her eyes. Are... If we didn't know she'd been buried alive, I'd say she was just. Vielleicht weiß ja die Amelie, was das soll. Wahrscheinlich nicht, ne? Stick around. We may have more questions. Hm. Don't worry. Nee. Hm. Aber warte mal, wir können ihn noch mal fragen nach dem Sofa-Scheiß. He looks upset. Best not bother him unless... He looks upset. Nee, auch nicht. Ähm, vielleicht ihn. Können wir ihn was Neues fragen? Oh, Mr. Fordham. You're back. Ja, das bin ich. We haven't got anything else. Scheiße. Gibt's hier ein Sofa? Jean probably wouldn't have... Nee. Auch nicht. Äh, Hotel war mal schon. Schauen wir da nochmal. Die was weiß von irgendeinem Sofa. Nee. Hier gibt es auch nichts. Uh, Kirka. Warte. Den haben wir schon lange nicht mehr. Nee, 
Können wir auch nicht reden. Kaffeehaus, vielleicht weiß die was. Und woher soll die was wissen? Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. <lacht> Voll abschließen, nee, That's it, nicht. Then you'd better get ich sollte erst rausfinden, wo das ist. Die mm, Prehand House. Vielleicht hier nochmal. Ah, jetzt ist die Frau weg, ne? Scheiße, jetzt kann man die auch nichts mehr fragen. Mist. Ah. Gyroskop. Remember before you you were allowed. Ja, Garderobe. Nee, da gibt's auch nichts mehr, ne? Nachtisch. Nee. Scheusen, Scheusen, Scheusen. Da war mal die Pirenhaus. Wir waren da überall. This quack has her eyes are if we didn't know she'd been Wo könnte das sein? Eigentlich denke ich ja hier ist ja noch ein Sofa. Wieso können wir das nicht? Können wir nicht sagen, schleich dich mal hier. Sofa in der Mitte, hat sie gesagt. Deswegen glaube ich wirklich, ist es ist hier. Mist, Mom. A horrible. There's nothing. You There's nothing. Hier ist auch nix. There's nothing here. That beast better not have misled us. There's nothing here. That beast. Why would it? Perhaps it's the mask. The hmm. Could be. Also das mit dem Klavier verstehe ich nicht, ne? Scheiße. Da ist auch nix. ist denn? Alles gut. Oh, dear God. <lacht> Nothing. Damn that bird. What the Ja, was hat der da geschwafelt? Aber Aua, Hund. Aua. Damn that bird. What the hell was he babbling about? <lacht> You're way more Aber da ist nichts mehr. Das old unit. This must be much young Und das mit dem Klavier Fuck no. Mir Oh Was Mir Oh, wart mal Pass mal auf. Das ist Do. Re. Mi. Fa. So. La. Ti. Do. Was? Mire. Sofa. Hat sie doch gesagt, ne? Der Papagei. Jetzt pass mal auf. Wir sprechen noch mal mit dem Papagei. So. A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. Me so far, Ray. In the middle, see? Me. Me. So far, Ray. In the middle, you see. Ich glaube, das ist nicht mehr wichtig, oder? 
in the intimate me to oh oh a per and not me so far eh? in the middle see uh in the middle see in the middle see könnte es heißen me so far eh? in the t in t me do me do wir probieren es jetzt erstmal mit mit dem sofa scheiß ob das ist schon alleine reicht das macht dann bestimmt das Sofa auf. Hier. Hör mal auf damit deinem Shadowing. So, jetzt pass mal auf. Das wäre also Mi Sofa Re. Das wäre E. Mi ist E. E so wäre G. F wäre F. Re. Re wäre D. Aber von unten, also. Also hier E. E. G. F. D. Okay. E. Dear God. This does not look good. He's dead. You should inform Dr. Fellows about this right away. It seems Guy was telling the truth after all. Yes, it would probably be a good idea to let him know of this development. Ooh ha. Ein bisschen stolz, dass wir das geschafft haben. Mi Sofari. Ah, toll. Gut gemacht. Guy? I yes? I... I found the secret room you told me about. You see? I wasn't lying. No, you certainly weren't. There was someone inside. A man. No. Who? I'm not sure. But I can only assume it was one of Madame Dupre's servants. Was he alright? I'm afraid not. He was dead. Dr. Fellows confirmed it was due to asphyxiation. Madame Dupre must have put him in there before I drugged her. And then, <coughs> with everything that's happened, she didn't let him out in time. Oh my god, it's my fault he's dead. If only I'd known. The circumstances are quite unfortunate, Mr. Dumas. However, this has shed a new light on Madame Dupre and her cruel practices. I can't say for certain that you were justified in your actions, but... I am a bit reluctant to say you are completely at fault. But the bottom fact is that Mr. Martin has been falsely accused of this crime. If I were to let you go, he would be punished in your place. Unless... Yes? I'm going to need you to write me a letter, Mr. Dumas. Of course, Mr. Fordham. Anything to take care of this mess. Good. Hopefully now this whole grim affair can be brought to an end. Okay. That's all for right now, but I'll be back. Yes, Mr. Fordham. I'll be here. I'll be back. Was war jetzt Äh. Oh, jetzt kann ich nur noch zur Abten gehen. Aber ich habe doch einen Brief. Äh, das war das. Verdächtige. Ich guide immer gestehe bei voller geistiger und körperlicher Verfassung den Mordversuch an Madame Laura Dupré. Okay. Ja, gut. Dann können wir jetzt wieder zu der gehen. Sagen der Dumas was. Und wir möchten gern die Dupré erschlagen. So, Fall abschließen. Okay, wer ist Ihr Prime Suspect? Lass Guy Dumas Anklagen freisprechen. 
Uh, it was Guy Dumas, a former servant at Dupre Manor. He used toxic plants to drug Madame Dupre so she appeared dead, which he learned about from her daughter's school books. What was his motive? That's the thing. I've learned that Madame Dupre is extremely cruel to her servants. She regularly beats them, and even has a secret room no bigger than a coffin where she places them as punishment. I discovered this secret room. I found a dead servant inside. He had died from asphyxiation. My God. A few months ago, Madame Dupre beat Guy's lover Celine to death. He wanted revenge, and intended to make Madame Dupre suffer the trauma of being interred alive. I see. Constance, I don't think Dumas should be arrested for his crime. He doesn't deserve it. Madame Dupre, however. Yes, I see what you're saying, and I agree. But what about Mr. Martin? I got a signed confession from Mr. Dumas. You can see the handwriting matches this note I found in the cemetery. That should be enough to release Mr. Martin, as well as giving Guy a head start in his escape from the city. It's gonna be tricky getting the department to look into this, but with the proof you've gathered, it should work. Excellent investigating, Fordham. I knew you still had it in you. And of course I'll dip into the department's Good Samaritan Fund to get you proper compensation for your work. For now, go home to your wife. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. Good evening. I'm looking for Madame Laura Dupre. This is Madame Dupre. I am her personal physician, Dr. Fellows. May we help you, officer? I'm afraid I must place Madame Dupre under arrest. What? On what charge? Several, actually. Manslaughter, domestic violence, murder in the second degree. Shall I go on, or can we continue this at the police station? <laughs> You won't have to worry about Madame Dupre anymore. She'll be in jail for a very long time. And Mr. Martin has been released with a full pardon as well. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I appreciate your help and your trust. Think nothing of it, but you'll need to leave town as soon as you can. Have you made plans? I was thinking of heading south. New Britannia is too cold and dark. I want to find some place more like my home. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Dumas. Addie, I'm home. Addie? She must still be out at her hairdressing appointment. I'm glad we're alone because I wanted to talk to you about something. Yes, Bill, I know. I told you I'm doing my best to try and find the flower shop burglar. No, for once, this isn't about him. This is about you. You want to talk about me? What about me? You can play dumb and deflect all you like with everyone else around you. But it won't work with me. I know exactly what you're thinking, and you know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm sick of games, Bill. I can't guess. Just tell me. Have you already forgotten the old days, Miles? Before I died, we were solving cases like nobody's business. You were one of the best detectives on the force. But ever since you started taking that soporific... Your mind hasn't been as sharp as before. If you're serious about taking on more complex cases, you need to listen to Adelaide and stop taking it. It's already had a negative effect on your performance. What are you talking about? We were able to discover the truth about Madame Dupre. Yes, but if you were working at your full abilities, you'd have come to that conclusion much sooner. If I stop taking it, you won't let me sleep through the night. Nothing will change. Well, things would change if you found you-know-who. I thought you said we weren't going to talk about that right now. Yeah, well, I say a lot of things. An understatement if ever there was one. Can't you just keep quiet without me having to take something? Afraid not, old friend. That's just not who I am or how this works. If you keep me up all night, I'll go crazy. Things have been hard enough as it is. And if, God forbid, Adelaide were ever to find out about... Hello, Miles. Is there someone else here? I thought I heard you talking just now. Fantastic. The jig is up. And here I thought we were doing so well, too. No, I was just going over the case. Thinking aloud, you see. Ah, of course. How was your appointment? Mrs. Lefebvre was her usual bossy and overly picky self, but she gave me a very generous tip. That's good. So I stopped by the shop on the way home and bought a new deck of cards. Excellent. Shall we have a few rounds of Eckarte? I believe you demanded a rematch last time we played. Yes, that would be nice. 
Well, you certainly managed to dodge that bullet. I only wish I could say the same. And it says here they still don't know what caused that explosion. I guarantee you it was sabotage. Those red-eyes have been causing a lot of trouble lately. Is that the group of anti-steam tech radicals? The very same. Why red-eyes, though? They're named after some fellow named Jonathan Red, apparently the one who began the whole anti-steam movement. It's really a rather stupid name, if you ask me. And uncreative, to boot. Well, what would you call them, then? Something more evocative, like the Boom Boom Boys. <laughs> Definitely gets to the point, I'll give you that. Perhaps you'd best stick with the detecting, dearest. Your nomenclature needs a bit of work. Well, I think it's about time I get ready for bed. <sighs> All right, Miles, if you must. could that be at this time of night? Good question. But Adelaide can handle it for now. I need to take my medicine. You certainly have your priorities in order. Go on then. Get that bottle of rat piss out of your nightstand and let's get this over with. Addie can handle whoever's at the door. I need to take my medicine. Ugh. Tastes like the devil's sweat. You could just stop taking it, you know. Bill, now is not the time to... Miles, could you come back out here, please? Be right there, dearest. Who was that at the door? A late-night courier. You've got a message from Upton. Seems this case is rather urgent. I want me to meet her as soon as possible. But didn't you just take your soporific? Are you going to be all right to go? It won't kick in for another hour or so. Should be plenty of time. All right, I'm going to bed then. Good luck, dear. Good night, Addie.